This is a quick instructional video on how to imprint odor or scent detection. So what I'm doing here is I'm loading up a toy, in this case a Kong, and I'm putting the odor in there. Now how people do it, I've been doing this for over several, several years. Uh, I started doing this back in 2009. This is when I learned how to do this. I worked for a couple of companies since, and I know that there are people that will, you know, put the gloves and the metal tongs and they'll be very, very careful. But I can guarantee you just working with different companies and working with hundreds of dogs, imprinting hundreds of dogs on this, I can tell you there's eventually, you're gonna be doing some cross-contamination with your hands. Uh, so this is very simple, you know, loaded up the cone with the target odor and we're just playing right now. A game that the dog is very familiar with, just playing with the toy, you know, chase the chase the toy, come back, play play with the toy. Very very motivational. And then all we do is we just kind of toss the toy back and forth. And this is just operating on the prey drive. The dog sees the toy, and then the dog gets to play with the toy. This is prey drive. What I'm going to be doing next on the on the next clip is going to be um, testing slash operating under hunt drive. So here the toy lands on a little bit tall grass. Now the dog can't see it. There's no movement. And now the dog has to look for it. That's what hunt drive is. This is her very first uh, send detection session. And it's fairly easy. We're not doing anything crazy. We're not using boxes. Uh, we're not doing uh, the Herstic wall. We're not using Dutch boxes. Super, super simple. And we're going to end it on this one here. Very first session, super short, super simple. The key here is to end it when, you, when the dog wants to keep going. We end it when the dog wants it more. Again, I'm going to go back to the original way which I learned, which was very similar to this, and we use boxes. And we use Dutch boxes. So the Dutch boxes are uh, wooden boxes that have a, like a sliding door or window made of plexiglass. And then the dog is to see the reward. The whole, the whole send detection thing is very, very complex. But it can also be very simplified in a couple of steps. Basically, you are associating a target odor and you teach a dog through hunt drive, which by the way, hunt drive is specific to each dog, meaning not every dog is born with insane hunt drive. Sometimes you have to develop it a little bit, but if they don't have it, they really don't have it. Hunt drive is when the dog wants to find the toy when the dog doesn't have it in sight. So when your dog chases the ball, your dog is operating on the prey drive. This is the chase response. This is the sight, stalk, chase, grab, bite sequence. That's prey drive. Hunt drive is when the dog is unable to see it. Maybe it saw it land, but then it lost sight of it. Now the dog has to look for it, and now they have to use their other senses, ideally their nose. So this is why we started by just tossing the toy, and then we ended it with the toy being slightly out of sight. Uh, this particular dog in the video is not super insane toy driven type of dog so this is not a this is not going to be a dog that is going to be doing explosive detection narcotics detection this is mostly recreational for this dog so you could tell she does have some hunt drive and knowing the dog she loves to use her nose but this is not going to be a dog that is going to be out there on the streets looking for the real stuff uh, I have worked with plenty of dogs like that, and what we want is we want insane types of dogs. Dogs that will rather die than give up on their toy or stop looking for their toy. Because that's when the most, most reliability happens, is when the dog is willing to look for it. Now, I did say that this is the very first session. You might have seen other training videos or other systems in which the send detection game starts with boxes and there's clickers, and then there is target training, basically. I have nothing against that because that's exactly how I teach it to some of our students, and this is exactly how, well, not exactly, but this is how I was taught as well, is by using boxes. 
And when I wor- went to work for the other two companies that I eventually worked for in my, in my career, uh, that's one of the things we did is we would go to boxes fairly quick. Now, I don't have a problem with using boxes at all. Uh, it's a good way to, to get the dog started and get the dog imprinted on the odor. But the reason that I like this particular technique that you saw in this video is because what this does is it addresses the love and the desire to hunt. If you start way too quick with just, we're going to teach the dog to sit, we're going to teach the dog the target odor, we're going to do, you know, click feed, click feed, you know, click your, your toy and your reward. Yes, that will do an excellent job at making a great association to the target odor, but uh, it doesn't always address the dog wanting to look for it like it's the, the best thing in the world and it's about to lose it. By doing it this way, by tossing the toy back and forth, slightly tossing it out, out of sight, slightly tossing it a little bit farther away, waiting till it lands, having the dog just look for it like it's just insane, and by building that up little by little until the dog is able to understand the game and understand that it has to use its nose to find this thing that is very important to it, that is how you get the most reliability. Here is why. The objective of a good scent detection dog should never be the toy. That should never be it. The objective, the end goal of a very well, a very reliable scent detection dog, the main objective should be the hunt. The hunt has to be important, not the toy. And so if you do start with boxes, if you do start with the clicker and the target, you know, the Herstic wall, and the Dutch boxes, and those other systems that are out there. There is nothing wrong with that. So that is a great system because, again, I do use them. But if you do start with those, it is important that you really address the hunt. Because unless you're going to be searching one room with like a few boxes and a few areas, you're not going to have the reliability that you need just off of that technique, off of those techniques. You're going to have to expand and generalize and eventually make the game a little bit more complicated. And then, yes, you will have a really nice, reliable dog. It is absolutely doable, and it gets done all the time. But um, the reason I like doing it this way is because I have time on my side, right? we got plenty of time with this dog. This is, again, mostly, mostly recreational. So we have time on our side, and we can use the dog's natural hunt drive and hunt ability to teach the dog that looking for this that is the that is the goal right and it sounds a little bit weird to say looking for it is the goal versus finding it it really is not that crazy i've worked with several scent detection dogs narcotics and explosive detection dogs and the best dogs to work with are the ones that once they find the odor they get rewarded they spit the toy out immediately and they go right back to hunting that is an amazing type of dog to work with because, yes, they get the end result. They're like, this is awesome. I want to go back to hunting. That's where the reliability is. As opposed to some dogs that I have seen that they're looking, 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 and then they realize, man, this is kind of a pain in the ass. And they go, screw this. I want my toy. And then the reliability sucks. That's when sometimes they start to false. That's when they don't start to hunt quite as much. And so that's kind of what happens if you, A, don't have the right type of dog, or B, and or B, you just jump to the alert a little bit too soon. So developing the hunt drive, developing the, the desire to look for it with intense purpose, that is the recipe for a very, very solid send detection dog. Remember, the end goal should be the hunt. It should not really be the toy it should be the hunt i want this dog to even after you take that toy away even after it gets paid with the toy it spits it right out and it goes i want to get right back to it again let me find it again that is just amazing to watch and in my opinion by doing it this way and then kind of really waiting a bit till we do the you know the targeting and the and the and the alert that we can do a little bit later but the hunt is already going to be there Whereas the alert, that can come later, and that's perfectly fine.